All right, I finally got my camera to focus. So, folks, welcome to the vidIQ Thursday live stream, where we answer your questions. As always, let's do this. vidIQ. vidIQ. vidIQ.com. Hello everybody, welcome to vidIQ. If this is your first time here, we are the YouTube tool and channel aims to educate you on your YouTube journey. And today we're going to be educating you on any question you have about YouTube, your channel and the vidIQ program. And I could not do any of these Q&As without a awesome guest. And we are joined today by Travis. He took a break on Tuesday, but he is back for the Thursday live stream Q&A. What's up, Travis? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. I'm so excited, so excited to be here. Q&A Thursday. And the embarrassing thing is that I've completely forgot to change the name at the top of uh, Travis's. So he's not Jeremy, it is Travis. So Travis, while you do some shout outs to some people, I'm just going to fix that problem. Who have we got in the live stream today? We got uh, Perry Comics, Done Let's Go, Waffler. Oh, here we go. This is what happens as soon as we do a shout Boom, out. Boom, here we go. <laughs> okay, this bite's for you. Um, PWC Forever, uh, Tori Bolin, uh, Paul Peck's Drywall, uh, WT Time, Movie Wings. I know Magdalena Helen was in there. There's just so many people in there. Oh my goodness. And uh. one more, Austin Place. All right, I'm going to have a go here. We've got Ant-Man, YT, Dragon Blocks, the Yeet Master, Hamiltonville Farm. You've been uh, very active on Twitter. Thank you for all the tweets you've been sending our way. Matrix is also here. Galaxy Beast 1, 2, 3. And Dan's Life is also in here. It's almost as if we've got a crowd in the house here, which means that I can play my first uh, sound effect. <laughs> That's right. What I'm going to be trying to do today is experiment with a couple of sound effects. Travis has been doing that and he's suggested that we do exactly the same thing today. So if you do potentially send in a super chat, doesn't matter what the value, and I'm not saying that you have to, but for example, what a perfect opportunity here. <laughs> Damie X Cooking Fantasy has just given us a super, part, super chat. And you get a sound effect for that. Now I've got a range of sound effects today and you can maybe request these if you want. So here's a, just a couple of samples we've got here. So, wrong buzzer. We got a, that horrible, irritating air horn noise. We've got a sad trombone. We've got a good old splat. We've got a children's celebration. And we've also got the start of Stone Cold Steve Austin's theme tune, The Glass Shattering. But of course, we can't play the full song because we'd be hit with a copyright claim, no doubt. So yeah, a couple of sound effects that I'm going to be trying to play throughout this uh, live stream. There's also just one thing I want to talk about as well before we get into Q&A. Uh, we do a webinar every single uh, Wednesday, and Travis is an expert at this, and he always uses the analogy of talking about chocolate cake, and believe you me, when you do a live stream, you get into a routine, and once you've got that routine going, you stick to it, and I fully applaud him for doing that, but if you've been on a live stream a couple of times, you may have talked about this chocolate cake uh, analogy several times in his search, uh, and what somebody's decided to do is create an anti-channel to Leron's webinar, which is literally called Choco Cake Hey. I hate cake, don't hate, hashtag chocolate cake hate, hash CCH. If you are on the webinar yesterday, you will understand completely what that means. And I just want to applaud the vidIQ for community for going out of their way here to creating something just rather unique and aw awesome. Now, I will say that if this channel gets 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, I will eat some chocolate cake live on air. So if you want to support the channel, uh, <laughs> Choco Hate Cake. I'm sure there's an audience for people who hate chocolate cake, then please do subscribe to it. But I just think it's one of these wonderful, fantastic things that we have in the vidIQ community. And uh, yeah, it's just the, the fun that we have here on our live streams. But let's get back to what we're supposed to do uh, every Thursday. That's to take your questions. There is a link in the video description. I think it's three very simple fields that you need to fill out your channel name, where you're from, and a question. And Travis and I will do our best over the next hour to answer as many of those questions as we can. We've already got a phenomenal response. I think this is the best ever so far. 47 questions already. We're going to filter out the ones which are simply how do I get more views? How do I get more subscribers? How do I grow my channel? We're not here to try and answer those bre big, broad, vague questions. We want to get into the nuts and bolts of channels and really try and identify the deeper meaning to the questions. And I'm going to start off here, Travis, with the first one that we have. 
Fantastic. Which is from the Easy JC from Colorado. Thank you for your question. And you ask, is it a good idea to branch out to other platforms, even if it means my audience will be separated? For example, I Twitch on stream, but I mainly focus growing on YouTube. And my answer to that generally would be, yes, it is a very much a good idea to diversify on the platforms because who knows, YouTube could flick their fingers tomorrow and whatever content you're creating on a certain platform doesn't suit their needs. For example, there's a big discussion going on that YouTube may be moving a lot of kids' content onto its own dedicated platform, which could have severe implications for many of those video creators. It may mean that they move on to Instagram or Twitch or wherever. And so having a diversified uh, range of uh, platforms is useful and it just means you reach a larger audience as well like you're live streaming on Twitch which I think is good because you don't want to be live streaming all the time on YouTube and you can take some of those Twitch live streams and curate that content into montages for the YouTube platform which I think it's more suited for. Any more thoughts on that Travis or do you think that's just generally a good idea to diversify? A hundred percent much like in the financial district where they tell you to diversify I really believe this as well. I'm trying to get better about this myself. Uh, If one of your you know uh, social media content let's say let's say for example you get banned or kicked off or even worse like the entire platform for whatever reason shuts down If you put all those eggs in that basket, you are starting all over again. So you're much better off to build a little bit of everything while you can, for sure. There's always probably going to be one strong platform where it is going to be your focus, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, vidIQ is a YouTube tool, but we are on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, making sure that we can share our message across all those platforms. All right, we've got loads more questions that have just come in, Travis, so uh, kick us off with another one. All right, from Choco Hate Cake, where we were just talking about. <laughs> from the UK, by the way. From the UK. Cheeky. Um, do, I like this question. Uh, does the way you edit a video matter? I really ha- I have really bad editing software, but I can't find a better one. So here's some things. There's actually some tremendous free editing software. So that's not an excuse. Um, for a long time, I used HitFilm. And um, I, you can also now get um, DaVinci Resolve, which is really a professional level software for free. Um, so the software itself isn't something that should be a barrier. Does the way you edit a video matter? Well, yes and no. So if, if let's, let's do a, a pretend moment here for a second. Let's say that I'm the talking head, you're doing a talking head and this is your video. Hi everyone, um, welcome, <laughs> uh, welcome to my channel. And I, today I would, um, I would like to do, so yeah, if you can't edit that out, then yeah, it absolutely does matter. Um, If you're talking about the slick transitions and stuff, that is more niche based. But by and large, if you just go around YouTube and look, most people are just doing cuts and that's usually enough. But look for the moments you can take out the the weird ums and ahs and the things that are not adding value to the video and just edit those out. If anybody watches any of my channel's uh, videos on vidIQ, I edit ruthlessly because I make a ton of mistakes. And you're absolutely right, Travis, there. Just adding that jump cut, it gets rid of all the uh, fluff that, where things go wrong, but it also adds what's called a pattern interrupt. So it's just something new visually to the viewer, and that just keeps their audio, uh, their intention uh, engaged. So, yeah, start with those jump cuts, and as you get better at that... Uh, because what you'll probably find is you record for 10 minutes, but you maybe have three minutes worth of valuable footage in that content. And that's that's a real task f- to start perfecting storytelling to begin with. And then you move on to the transitions, the graphics and so on, because that's where you can add even more complexity. And it takes even longer. For example, Travis, I mean, well, I'll ask you a question here. How long does it roughly take you to edit your videos? For me, it's approximately an hour per minute. So a seven minute video might take seven hours to film and edit. So are you asking all production or just edit? From just to make the video. Yeah. So, so to get a video ready to upload to YouTube. Uh, well, (laughs) doesn't take me very long, actually. So uh, my normal, my raw footage for like a six minute video is maybe nine minutes. And it takes me about 40 to 50 minutes to edit that video. I'm so envious of you. (laughs) I I hear this from a lot. I hear this from a lot of people. I'm like, it takes me about an hour and a half to put together a video from start to finish. Oh, my word. Yeah, that's uh, why would I spend more time on it? (laughs) Well, for me, it's because I'm really bad in front of camera 
And the way I do it, sorry, we're getting into this a little bit, but I think it's a really interesting topic. When I film in front of camera, the way I build my stories is I have to film maybe 30 seconds to a minute. Then I edit it. And then I think, right, what am I going to do next? And I know this is like a, some people think this is a painful way of making my videos, but I've had Leron tell me, say, to tell me, who's another member of a team, like, I don't know how you make your videos and because they seem to be so well structured. And it's yeah. because I build on it as I'm filming. I, try, I sort of like have a, a grand idea idea of what I know where I'm going to start and I know where I'm going to finish but I have all of these sparks of inspiration and ideas as I'm making a video and that, that doesn't happen until I'm in the creative process but I would love to be able to create a video from start to finish in about an hour two hours because I'm well, able to create so much more stuff but I think it it depends on the video creator everybody has their own creative method yes and the the things that the vidIQ YouTube channel has on it the things that you're doing are at a level that's that's higher than mine. It really is. Like I, I don't. I'm not really trying to educate a lot of people. I'm trying to entertain them. Mm. So it's easier for me. Um, but the way that this channel runs and the videos that we do, and I think people in chat could could agree with this. The educational portion of this is so easy. You break it down so well that it would literally take me a lot longer. But um, I'm just not trying to do all those extra things. But man, yeah. I mean, it's funny because you come across creators, you're like, I wish I could do it like you. And they're like, I yeah, wish I could yeah. do it like you. And yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm, I wish I could do the things you do. And so it's, yeah, it's funny that way. Well, what a fascinating conversation that is. Folks, let us know in the comments, like how, how long it takes you to edit a video, because I think that'd be really interesting. I'll move on to the next one. Uh, we get this, uh, we, we've got a regular qu a per person who asks questions who's delightful that I always pronounce their name correctly, which must be like the only person I do this with. It's Leia Arts from Minnesota. Uh, this is a challenging one, this. What is a piece of advice you give new YouTubers today that you wouldn't have five years ago? And vice versa, what advice five years ago doesn't necessarily apply today? What an interesting question that is. So I think I will start with something along the lines of... Advice I would give people today is that the thumbnail and the title are so much more important than they were previously because I think a lot less emphasis is put on the overall metadata. So tags, descriptions aren't as important, I think, certainly in terms of search volume. And because the competition is so good these days, the, the level of thumbnails is on a different scale to it was five years ago, that you just have to be better at that process. And... It used to be that I would spend 90% of the time on the video and 10% doing all of the other stuff. Now it's more like 70, 30. I'm really spending a lot more time crafting a better thumbnail and, and title. So that's kind of a, the change I would say. What about you, Travis? Really the same thing. Like we should probably change the title of this live stream to be perfectly honest. Uh, we're <laughs> people at the moment. Because we're what, sorry? We're clickbaiting people at the moment. We're, we're telling people we're going like, to channel review their channel, but we're not going to review channels. Today. Oh, have I? Oh, sorry, have I put in the wrong tile? <laughs> oh my word! Whoops! Uh, right. Well, that's that's deserves a sound effect from me, which is a, the splat noise and a sad trombone. I thought I'd change that. Right, Travis, you answer that question. I'm going to yeah. change the title, but I don't know if that will actually change, make a difference. That's probably a great idea. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> so I, I do apologise, folks. I just haven't. I updated the thumbnail, the description, but not the title. Yes, I can see that now. Let's change that. Yeah, uh, I think it's right. It's really all about title and thumbnail. Um, I think. I think there's there's two ways of doing it. Like when you first start out, it's really smart to go after SEO and go after long tail titles and try to get search and try to get that going. And then once you get momentum, really start looking at how to entice people um, with thumbnail and title, even more so like on an emotional level. I think when you're early on, especially if you have like a how-to channel, SEO is incredibly important. And doing that with titles that are um, searchable and stuff are really very, very good pieces of uh, advice. And then once you kind of get that crowd going and people are starting to come to your channel all the time, give them in some enticing um, thumbnails and, and titles, not clickbait, but you know, some really enticing stuff to have them click whenever you upload. Make sure you hit that bell. And let's get some likes in the chat. Can we get some thumbs up and some likes in this chat? Can we hit that like button, please? So, so I have a, an update here, folks. I have updated the title. Uh, so if you refresh the live stream, uh, that might change the title. I do honestly apologize. I thought I changed everything right, but obviously I didn't. Uh, but we've still got in lots of questions, so uh, we'll carry on moving them through them. Travis, what have you got next lined up for us? All right. So uh, Heroite, Hero, Heroite asks, I've recently changed what I've been doing on my channel because I enjoy it a lot more and is a lot less stressful to me. However, it gets about 20% of the views in my older videos. Should I go back to my older videos or should I keep pursuing my passion? Great question. 
This is actually pretty easy to answer because um, there's something that you need to kind of pay, depending like, I'm gonna do this based on not knowing what your content is. Mm -hmm. But let's say for example, like we said before, you made a chocolate cake video channel and everyone loves to watch your chocolate cake videos, but you think, well, I really like Pokemon. I'm passionate about Pokemon. Well, the people who came and subscribed for the chocolate cake are probably not gonna watch the Pokemon stuff, which is why your views are gonna be lower. However, if that passion is within you, you can absolutely make a successful channel out of it. It's just gonna take you time to kind of dig out of the other niche that you previously were in, even if it's a little bit different. I would say absolutely stick with what you're passionate about because it will show through and success is just a matter of putting time in. So that's that's my advice. People usually come to your content for the game that you're playing and they will eventually stay, uh, subscribe, become fans for the personality and who you are. But that doesn't mean you need to be, uh, to begin with, um, concentrating on one game is a good idea. But at the end, in, at the end of the day, that the popularity of that game is going to fade, or y your interests are going to move on. So I think that's why it's important to stress that when gamers do uh, gaming channels, that they have to inject as much of their personality into each video as possible. Whether that's in front of camera, uh, doing narrations, and like just getting getting the audience involved so they're committed to you as much as the game. That's a challenge for a lot of gamers. So. I would say um, there's, there's usually one game that might be like your the, the feeder that brings people into your content, but then there's a, in, in, maybe 20-30% of your stuff is experimenting with other gaming content, and when you move to another game, try and keep try and find a link there. So if it is uh, Fortnite, then naturally the progression might be uh, Apex Legends, or if it is uh, Call of Duty, the natural progression might be Battlefield. If, for example, you're going to jump from a game such as Minecraft to WWE 2K19, there might be too much of a gap there, because while it is gaming, the topic is quite different. Uh, and people may have noticed, by the way, uh, my wrestling gear in the background. That's because I'm not stood up today, so I'm not showing the YouTube um, stuff. It's more the uh, wrestling stuff. And I have played a game with Travis, actually, because we're both wrestling fans, and we tried to think of um, several... YouTube pay-per-view wrestling events, uh, <laughs> such as Subscriber Slam and um, Sub for Sub Mania. <laughs> so if you can think of any uh, wrestling-themed uh, YouTube pay-per-view wrestling events, let us know in the chat, and I'd love to read them out. But we'll move on uh, to the next question, which comes from TSP Heat, Ohio. And it is a similar question here. It, is it good to stay in one game for a gaming channel, or can you have different games played in one channel? So just to repeat a little bit what we're talking about, yes, you can have more than one game. If you look at many of the popular gamers, such as Preston Plays, PewDiePie, is not really a gaming channel anymore. The strength of their channel is built on their the personality and the brand eventually. You look at, I mean, I ask this question to a lot of gaming uh, channels who subscribe to games, and I ask the question, have you subscribed to that channel because of a game, or have you subscribed to that channel because of a person? And you more usually the answer is a person. So that's what you, the mindset you have to be in. Your topic is a game, but your audience is gonna be built through you. So that's what I would answer uh, there. Um, all right, Travis, let's take another question here yeah. as I search for one. This is a good one. Felix the Dev from Puerto Rico asks, how do you know if you've niched down too much on your YouTube channel topics? This is a really interesting Oh, God, how, we went there. too far. Right, okay. Because we keep telling people you need to niche down, niche down, niche down, which means, you know, make your subject a little bit less broad. But that's a pretty good question. How do you know if you've niched down too much? Well, I mean, that's, that's a good question in that, like, maybe there is no too far of a niche unless hmm. there's literally only one thing you can talk about yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe that's too far like let's talk about the color yellow i love the color yellow it's yellow next video is it's yellow again um <laughs> other than that uh you probably are fine if, if you feel like there's enough that you can do multiple videos on even if it's talking about the same general thing with different um takes on it then you're fine I, I think that there is probably a, a, you know, a point of no return where you're like so far into the hole that you that you're really, you're not, not talking about anything. I think it'll be real obvious. If you can't come up with any topics in your niche, like you've literally talked about all of them, you've only done five videos on your channel, you've gone down too far. Step up a level. If you're talking about chocolate chip ice cream that has mint in it, 
and that's your channel and that's you've done five videos there's no other way to go then how about just chocolate ice cream or, or just ice cream now you have all the flavors so just think one level up um if if you've got five yeah. videos you've covered the whole thing you've gone too far I think the analytics will probably tell you if you're doing videos and the, the the audience is, the views are starting to low, the watch time is getting less. And take a look at the comments. If people are, if there's a bunch of people saying we've seen exactly the same thing already, then move away. But to give you my experience, uh, I built a channel on how to record your iPhone screen. And you think, how many videos can you do on that? Two or three? I did about 300, just answering every single question looking at the comments, troubleshooting what people had problems with, looking at every single app that was out, looking at the problems with those apps, and uh, I somehow find a way to do it. Leron's now finding himself in this situation. We keep This is like the Leron live stream at the moment, but he's having a lot of success with faster Wi-Fi now. How many videos can you do on that topic? He's got one like feed of video that's getting hundreds of thousands of views, and now he's trying to find ways to leverage that topic. And we were talking about it again this morning, like how can we do this? And maybe look at every single app on uh, Android and iOS and say, does this help? Let's start getting some products in and uh, looking at previous videos on YouTube that are made three or four years ago and maybe asking the question, do those techniques and strategies for getting Wi-Fi still work in 2019? Uh, so it's always a challenge, but I was all, always argue there is always content. There is an um, infinite ways to look at one particular um one particular topic usually. Thank you for the super chat from J.R. Bjornsson, who says, hello from your blind viewer from Alberta, Canada. Wow. Uh, thank you for the super chats. And uh, that's a, a, an interesting way of experiencing uh, YouTube, I guess, uh, whether you're partially sighted or you maybe treat this as a, a podcast or you'll listen to it. But yeah, really appreciate the uh, um, super chat there. All right. My next question comes from Fame for Less from Kentus. Kentucky. What should your thumbnails of your videos consist of? I will answer this broadly by saying probably a lot less than what's currently in your thumbnails. And the reason I say that is because most thumbnails are jam-packed with all sorts of icons and images and people and words. And when you shrink it down to 10% of the size, so not the size that you edit it at, the size that people see your thumbnail, then it might lose a lot of its context. So I would generally say two or three primary colors, two or three people or two or three objects and no more than six words, generally speaking. So look at your thumbnails now and answer those questions. If you've got too much of any of them, then simplify. Travis? Yeah, I agree. Like, I also look at the people in your niche that are doing it yeah. well, that are succeeding. Um, a lot of times you can mimic enough of what someone else is doing to find the success on your own and then give your own twist on it. Um, I always just point to like Mr. Beast. Uh, he's just so good at it. He tells a story with his thumbnail. Yeah. Title just makes you need to click. So just find what the people in your niche are doing because it's different in every niche, by the way. Um, some need a lot more uh, going on in the thumbnail than other niches. Um, but yeah, just look at the, look at the leaders in your niche. All right, I feel the need for a uh, sound effect here. So I'm going to do a yes. drum roll uh, before Travis asks his next question. So drum roll. Travis, go. All right. Viking clips from Canada. I love Canada. All right. How would you improve your click-through rate? Now this, again, this is one of my favorite things to talk about because click-through rate is everything. For those of you who don't know what click-through rate is, you are missing on the one reason that you either are or are not getting views. Everyone asks, how do I get more views? Improve your click-through rate. Literally, that's your answer. Click-through rate is a number by which the number of times your thumbnail is shown to a person uh, divided or multiplied by the amount of times it's actually being clicked. So basically, let's give you an example of if your thumbnail is shown to 100 people and one person clicks it, that's a 1% click-through rate. Obviously, you're looking for the highest number possible. YouTube tells us that between 2 and 10% is more than half of all the videos on YouTube uh, are in that percentage. So try to really strive high on that. Uh, I like to look for a minimum of 5% for myself personally and try to go up from there. But really, whatever you're doing, just try to improve upon it. So again, look at some of the leaders in your niche. Look for, I, we talked about this, I think last week, I talked about color theory, do some research on that. And then just really look at, other look at look at it from a viewer's perspective. I talked to a creator yesterday, and he said something very interesting to me. He said, 
you know, the way that I do my, my thumbnails and titles is I really just look at them as if I was a viewer, like what would make me want to click? So he would put his thumbnail and title um, kind of like up against everything else that's on YouTube and go, would I click it or not? And that's really the best way to improve your click-through rate is to look at what is making people click. The next time you click on a YouTube video, think to yourself, why did I click? Was it the thumbnail, the title? And then try to make that work for uh, your thumbnails and titles. Just a couple of things from me. Uh, YouTube says that the uh, typical click-through rate is 2 on 10%. And when people read that, they kind of get worried that when their click-through rate is 3%. What I would say is, ignore what anybody else's click-through rate is, is benchmark yours and aim to improve on yours. Ours last year was 3%. And we didn't think that was very good, so we worked to improve that. Now it's up in the 5% range, so it's still middle of, middle of the road, but we've doubled our view count from that because 100% more people are clicking on our videos. Well, the maths the math, math is a bit wrong there, but yeah, 3%, 6%. It has been 10% in the last month, It's sort of, but it's in that 5 to 10% range now, which we're more than happy with. And also, if you have really popular videos, your click rate might go down. Right. Yes, that deserves a sound effect. There is nothing wrong with that. That means that YouTube is sharing your video amongst a much wider audience and a lot of them are not going to be invested in your content, but that's fine. Would you rather have your video shared between 10,000 people with a click-through rate of 10% or a million people with a click-through rate of 30 with 3%? If you do the maths quickly, I think you're going to get more views from the more shareability. You want free advertising from YouTube and that's come through click-through rate. I just wanted to go here but to JR Bjornsson who's just mentioned in the chat here. That's the one who just gave us a super chat here on who's a, a, a blind viewer slash listener. Currently, he's making blind videos educating the side of people of what it's like to be blind. It doesn't make him happy, but it grows my channel. I just want to say thank you for doing what you're doing on YouTube. YouTube me needs more, I would say, like heroes like you, who's yeah. f who has something that maybe that it's could be considered a vulnerability but you're, or, uh, or something that you're maybe you're not sure about whether to share on YouTube and you're sharing that positively on YouTube and we don't hear enough of this on YouTube because of all of the big drama stories but the backbone of how the YouTube platform was built was through stories and uh, uh, videos from people like yourself. So I just want to applaud you for that and don't stop what you're doing. Thank you for being a member of the vidIQ community and the YouTube community. And I hope your channel grows because because of the area you're in, you're probably in quite a niche and you can become one of the authorities on that. So thank you for being part of this live stream. Uh, have, who's got the next question? Is it me or you, Travis? I, I, I can't do. remember. But before you do, uh, can you give me like a, like a, I don't know, a congrat, not, no, what, like a crowd. Do you have a crowd cheering noise you can do? I've got, I've got children cheering noise. Do that for D Nimmin who's in the chat. Hey, D, good to see you. Hey, D, how you doing? The, uh, the mobile YouTube creator expert, I would say. If you need any help on how to create videos from on a, from a mobile's perspective, make sure to check out his channel. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, we had a bunch of kids, uh, you know, yell for you. So that's, that's, <laughs> that's great. Okay. The Bipolar Gamer DJ from Canada once again, love Canada, um, says this. Now, this is a great question because you really have to think this through. Hi, didn't start my channel yet. So that, that's a good start to the, to the question. Uh, what advice do you have to start uh, a new channel with zero views and zero subs? How to stand out? Thanks, guys. Well, great. Um, everyone starts from zero. We say it time and time and time again. And I think starting in 2019 is just a little bit different than 2018, which is a little bit different in 2017, um, especially if you are a family friendly channel with like kids stuff. So now that's becoming a weird thing. But I think in general, the one thing you always have to keep in mind is the viewer. What does the viewer want? What are you passionate about that viewers would like to see? What are you good about? What's the one piece of knowledge you have that you think no one else has and that you can share? Just share that. Continue to share that. With time and practice, everything will get better. So don't worry too much about all of the different things we're talking about right now. Just get started. Just pick up the camera, shoot, edit, upload, and do it again and again and again and again. 
D Nimmin is outshining us here. He's got a lot of groupies here. I saying, oh my God, D's in the house and everything. So uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks for uh, sabotaging our live stream here. But you are, of course, more than welcome. I would agree with everything that Travis has said. Uh, just press record. Just start. You've got to yeah. think of YouTube as a piece of software. And the only way you're going to learn how to use it is to upload videos. Uh, for me, I think it took around about 50 to 100 videos to get to understand how the YouTube platform works. And then maybe, I don't know, another 200 to 500 videos to start to get an understanding of what an audience wants on YouTube. I know that sounds a lot, uh, but I, I, it, for me, I just kind of like work, My I just through sheer bloody mindedness is how I've done anything on YouTube. It's just throwing a lot of stuff against the wall and seeing what sticks. Uh, other people will do it a slightly different way, but I think experience always trumps any advice that could be given on YouTube. Thank you for the super chats from Eric V. Goatman. What a fantastic username that is. Uh, you are more than welcome for the help that we provide in this live stream. And we have a question here from the Lost Gamer from Wisconsin. The only re I, I just associate with Wisconsin with Making a Murderer from the Netflix documentary. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know why, but it's just one of those things. Uh, yeah. How do you feel about channels that are trying to be a one-hit wonder account, seeking out the latest trends and trying to be the first one to meet a certain topic. And I'm absolutely fine with that. I think it's a fantastic strategy. Uh, I mean, let it, let's put it this way. Would you rather have a channel that has 100,000 subscribers and 10 million views from one video versus a channel with 50 videos and maybe 10,000 views and you're still trying to find your way? Just having that initial uh, boost surge is going to give you so much confidence to create more content. And any exposure you can get, I think, is a good thing. Eventually, these channels are going to have to establish some sort of consistency. But trends are a big thing on YouTube. We've demonstrated this ourselves with us. You know, the PewDiePie versus T-Series story. But we're not just that channel. We do all sorts of other videos. And we do with live streams like this. So I, I haven't really got an issue with that. I think any way to get yourself seen on YouTube could be a good thing. As long as you're doing it ethically and there's no sort of real bad stuff going on and you're following really, really negative drama or something, that's fine with me. All right, Travis, we're going to take one more question and we're going to a quick fire round. What have you got for us now? I just found one from uh, Master Clashers from the UK. I know that likes are not as important as they used to be, but do dislikes play a role in how YouTube shows your videos? Well, uh, I think that the, the very easy answer is no, it doesn't necessarily. It's yes and no. It's yes, no, and maybe. So let's start with the yes part. Uh, allegedly, uh, when you hit dislike, it won't show that person who disliked it more videos like it. And that makes sense. That part actually makes sense. If you dislike a video, why would YouTube show you more of it? Now, that's the way it's supposed to work. Does it affect the video overall? No. If you look at the most disliked video in all of <laughs> YouTube, it's got tons of millions of views. So no, that it doesn't affect you there. Um, and, and to the same degree, like likes, uh, you know, you can gain likes and dislikes. So it's, it doesn't play as much of a, a role. And then the maybe is maybe, but probably not. Yeah, probably a small percentage, uh, if any. Um, I think it is, it's useful to see whether you got likes or dislikes to understand how much organic traffic a video has got. Like if there's a video with 100,000 views and it has only 30 likes and 10 dislikes, from us, we're starting to think, oh, is that paid content or has it been shared outside the YouTube platform, which means it doesn't get as much engagement. YouTube likes engagement, obviously, people staying on the platform. So there probably are some positive metrics, but we wouldn't be able to give you a percentage. It, it, mostly, I, I'm going to say it's down to click-through rate and watch time. And that's what YouTube tells you in the that funnel analytic in the new Creator Studio. Thank you very much to Life by Ashley for the $1.99 Super Chat. Travis, I think you're right. I think these sound effects are working. They are, they yeah. are getting this. Uh, we need like something that's more celebratory. Find a more celebratory <laughs> one in the chats. Find one that's like an explosion or something. <laughs> oh, God. I, I, I'll have to load up some more for next time. Right. What we're going to do is the question segment. Oh, wow. We've got another. I'm there sorry. Go. We've got another uh, well, super now. chat. Wow. Oh. Massive crowd roll for this one. $5 from Ride Beside. Thanks for the review a couple of weeks ago. Some very good feedback and started applying some already. Thumbnails are the high 
Cardi. So that must have been from a channel audit. You are more than welcome. And yeah, I should mention that we do do channel audits, but we do them on a Tuesday. I'm really sorry about the title. That was a mistake this week. All right. Hashtag question. What we're going to do is a quick five minute round whereby in the live stream chat, if you put hashtag question and then a very quick question, Travis will try our best to answer it as quickly as possible. The first one I will see will trigger the timer and then we'll do some action packed stuff here. And here we are. Go. I can see the first one. So the countdown begins. And we go. Rapid mode. Question. How would you approach a skateboard and parkour channel? Uh, I would look at the... Uh, so this is not an area I'm familiar with. I would look at what the uh, big creators are doing and maybe see if you can feed off what their, what their trending things are uh, in that area. And probably tutorials. I think tutorials are probably a good way to start for smaller channels in that area. See what um, stunts haven't been done by other video creators yet and start with them using a bit of keyword research as well to see what people are searching for. Travis. Question, does commenting in videos help gain subscribers, not self-promoting? It can, but more importantly, it gets your name out there. And it gets you, especially in the niche that you're, you're familiar with, like if you have a, let's say, a skateboarding channel, as we just talked about, and you go to other skateboarding channels and you give positive feedback, you give uh, great comments, not trying to self-promote, eventually people are going to recognize your name and they're just generally going to check you out. So yeah, absolutely it can, but really think about it being part of an actual community and that part is really powerful. So try to leverage that. Michael King asks, how do I pay money for subscribers and views? The simple answer is you don't, you shouldn't, you will get your channel terminated potentially, it's against terms of service, and you're not going to get any organic traffic from it. You're just going to get numbers and that doesn't help anyone. So that's just like a general warning to everybody. Travis, what question have we got next? Question, what do you think of Studio Creator Beta? I personally love it. Um, the, the only problem I have with it at the moment is... Uh, uh, comments seem to be kind of wonky with the held by you know the the spam part seems to be a little wonky but the amount of data that's in there is phenomenal i love it quick question to everybody who panicked when uh, yesterday all of a sudden you can get to your classic studio i was clicking on a real-time starts and it's like hey we're gonna let you we're gonna force you to use the new studio today and it's like, oh panic uh, i i love uh, but i've got to say i do like the new creator studio there's so much data in there the one thing i'm still not keen on is I feel as if you still have to do more clicks to get to the screens that you want to a little bit. And because we're not used to the channel management, because we there's only a few people can use the upload screen so far, that's going to take a little bit of use, getting used to. But I do like the new upload process. The next question comes from, let's see, I'm going to pick this one, which is from Lurgs. There's three minutes left on this format. Have you got time to boil an egg? No, because we've only got two minutes 30 left. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Oh, God, God, that was a cop out of an answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, let me find one question. Does Rob actually own vidIQ? Ironically, <laughs> Rob does own vidIQ. This Rob, on the other hand, <laughs> not so much. We're, it's funny, uh, we had a tweet about this question yesterday. Like, uh, what are the big myths of YouTube? And the big myth for us was that I own YouTube. I do not. Head on <laughs> over to the vidIQ Twitter account and you will see a little bit of a hint of who does own a channel. And you will f more will be revealed on that question next Monday, I think, when we've Ooh. got another creator story. And you can have a guess who that might be about. I'm excited. Uh, all right, it's my turn for a question, isn't it? And it's going to be uh, Movie Wigs. Uh, what can I put on my thumbnail for a tutorial channel? And the answer to that is usually uh, some payoff of what somebody's going to get by the end of the tutorial. For example, if it's building something, showing the finished article. If it's making a hairstyle, show them what the hairstyle is going to look like at the end or a before and after. And I think in terms of tutor um, tutorial videos, you can be a little bit more forgiving with text. Uh, like It might just be how to do something, and I think you can do that a little bit more in those thumbnails. So certainly the final finished product is the most important thing that you would probably include in a thumbnail. Travis? Yeah, question. Does Travis have a channel? I do. It's Travis MCP on the YouTubes, and I'll just do another one real quick because that was just shameless, shameless self-promotion. <laughs> uh, and then, Rob, do you have your own channel? <laughs> Um, okay, so yes, it's called vidIQ. Yeah, exactly. uh, I also do have another channel called the Video Gadgets Journal, which is about tech. 
predominantly how to record your iPhone screen. But I haven't made a video on that in a single year. The ironic thing is, is uh, my strategy was to create evergreen content. So even though I haven't made a single video in over a year, I think the channel has gone from maybe getting like 600,000 views a month to like 300,000 views a month, which I just cannot explain. It's unfathomable that I'm still getting that many views. But yeah, will VGJ ever return? Maybe one day in the future, but I am hardcore vidIQ right now. And I'm going to take one more question with a few seconds left. Uh, Neil Sneakskin asks, what is your full-time work? This is my full-time job. I used to be a amateur YouTuber and I did a bit of freelance work for vidIQ to begin with, but then they asked me to come up on board full-time, which I did. I've actually done the story of this which is going to be revealed soon on vidIQ but also on Brian G. Johnson's channel another awesome video creator uh, I did a collaboration with him on how I went from going from zero to full time it took a long time it took a decade but that's where you'll find the full story alright thank you we will do another quick five minute uh, round later on I'll just take off that but we're going to go into some more questions uh, Travis have you got one lined up I think I have if you uh, haven't Okay, yeah, I think I have one. Okay. Uh, okay, hello. How do, so this is from Tech Collins. Hello, how do I, oh, this is great timing. D, I hope you're still here. Hello, how do I produce high quality videos that don't consume a lot of space? I compared one of my videos, very low quality, to one of Nick Nimmin's, and mine was far larger in size. What am I doing wrong? By the way, I film on my phone, if that helps anyway. So I think he's actually talking about file size rather than like quality. Yeah. Um, so it depends on your editing software. Um, depends depending on what you're editing software, like I use LumaFusion on my iPad to edit all my videos. And in there, when you export it, there's an option. But here's the thing, there's actually file size recommendations on YouTube. If you just Google uh, like 1080p uh, file sizes for YouTube, you, they'll actually give you the optimal file sizes, or not file sizes, but bit rate, which will make them smaller. Okay. A file is not that big actually uh, to upload it to YouTube but a lot of these softwares actually will up will will export it in a in a format that is unnecessary and you have these huge files I'll give you an example I uploaded a video um, it was a 4k video it was only like a 10 minute video it took two and a half hours to upload uh, if I had compressed it a little bit better it would not have taken two and a half hours to upload uh, so Definitely be uh, just Google that. I'm sure you'll find it. It's super simple. And then just adjust your settings appropriately. I also find that if you um, record uh, files, uh, video uh, high, and you have a bigger file size, when you put it into a video editor, then it turns it out the other way. It doesn't compress it that much. It still retains its file size. For example, I uh, just edited a, like a 45 minute video and it's come out at one and a half gig. And then my girlfriend was, um, she's thinking about getting into uh, YouTube and she did some recording on her iPhone uh, and there were huge file sizes. So that when it came out of the uh, video editor, it was 100 meg and it was a minute long. So if wow. it was 40 minutes, it would have been God knows how many gigs. So I think... What comes into your editor can make a difference as well. And I just caught something there, uh, Travis. You were saying you edit all your videos on um, on an on an iPad or an iPhone. Yep. You don't yep. do it through a computer. No. I mean, I'm I'm I can't believe that he he, he spends <laughs> two hours editing videos and he does it on a mobile device. Folks, if you need your editing tips and tricks and techniques, <laughs> Travis is going to be doing some live streams on that topic because I <laughs> I, I need lessons in that. All it's right, next question. Yeah. Is from uh, G-Core from Canada. Uh, a lot of Canadians in the house. I live in Vancouver, so uh, uh, thank you for the uh, support up north. What is your view on the ridiculous wait times for people who have been waiting months upon months to get accepted into the YouTube Partner Program, typically towards music channels, because that's what I create and I've been waiting nearly six months for, but I'm not the only one. Yes, I agree that this is uh, something that YouTube are failing at in terms of responding to people. It seems to me that a lot of video creators have fallen into this vort YouTube vortex where they've gone into a second review and then they never hear anything else from YouTube. And if you talk to them on Twitter, they'll give you something vague like it. It's going to take a bit of time to review. Uh, we hope to get back to you shortly. But they never indicate, like, what, what's the upper limit? Should I be waiting three months, six months, 12 months? And I, I would say that, and a Creator Insider have said this as well, if the longer it takes to get a reply 
And if you haven't got a reply, the chances are that something isn't right with your channel. Now, that is not a good answer because you should be receiving some sort of answer from YouTube. And yeah, I think it's a failing on YouTube and they are going to VidCon. And maybe I'm going to try and pose that question to them, uh, see if I can get an answer there. But I think YouTube know this is a problem and they just can't give an answer because there's thousands of different examples and they can't apply it to everyone. And I just wish you the best of luck and hopefully you can get an answer eventually to your question. But there is no good answer, unfortunately. Um, Travis, have you got another one lined up? We've almost got, got 100 questions here today. Thank you for all of your questions. Of course questions. we do, because we're so amazing. Uh, I think they're all. I think half of them are addressed to Dean Nimmin, but uh, you know, what can we do? <laughs> uh, this was from Hamiltonville Farm from Florida. When making titles using keyword research, which you can do with the free VidIQ plugin, which oh can yeah, yes you can, Whoa. yes you can. Sound effects here. Hit it! I love it. Uh, <laughs> can you use a clever way to use the term, or just use it as a standalone term? For example. If the term is how to drive a tractor, does the title have to be how to drive a tractor? Or can you use something like how I drive a tractor on my farm? Does the term have to be verbatim? Now, this is a great question. Mm. And I will point it back to you uh, by saying when you search for something like that and the vidIQ plugin pops up on the right hand side, you will notice that not every single video actually has the verbatim title. The reason yeah. for that is the algorithm kind of knows what the video is about yeah. by a million different reasons it knows that. So do you have to know? Should you? Yes. Mainly because the closer you are to the original search term, the better chance you have of, of kind of ranking for it. So it doesn't have to interpret what the video is about. It already knows that that's definitely what the video is about. It gives you a slight advantage. Does that guarantee number one search? No. You still have to do the work. You still have to have a great video. People have to be engaged, all that stuff. But it does give you a slight bit better chance. And what I always tell anyone that I, I talk to, I say, listen, stack the deck in your favor as much as you can because it, the, the competition out there is fierce. These YouTube streets are vicious. So get out there and stack the deck. I would also just add as well in uh, a title should usually serve two purposes if you're a search heavy channel and it's that's for somebody to find your content but then give them a reason to click so what what was the original term like how to drive a tractor yes I, it, so i'm going to do something sh completely stupid here but it might be how to drive a tractor without it exploding now i know that sounds absolutely crazy and yeah, you wouldn't use that probably in the title but you have to have some intrigue within the title as well it's not how to drive a tractor by itself is not going to be enough to convince somebody to click on it you've got to give them a specific reason a tease or something along those lines so i think just adding a bit of whether you call it personality or like some adjectives like how to drive a tractor efficiently or how to drive a tractor fast or how to drive a tractor safely just adding those extra little words uh, to enhance the title will help you in that respect thank you to tori Bo boland who is so appreciative for the live streams and we are so appreciative for the two dollars 79 in canadian that you've just sent us next question here this is a really interesting one travis i can't remember if you audited this channel with me or not or it was jeremy jessica j from yeah, los angeles now she's got a great question here why do i constantly have more views and subscribers and how can i fix that my answer to that is you don't oh, want to fix that that is exactly what you want on youtube you want youtube sharing your content to more than your subscribers and i mean like let's say you get five thousand subscribers you've got ten thousand views then you're gonna have ten thousand subscribers and fifty thousand views you yeah. are on the right track you are doing everything right don't stop <laughs> any more to add to that not travis yeah, or... no that's exactly right like that's what you want and there's probably a bunch of people in the chat now going wait a minute <laughs> yeah you can do that and yeah you can if you're a really spectacular channel uh, jessica j has a great channel Awesome. Another one here. The Super Chat's coming from Hamilton Farm. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, I do not have a cow noise or a farm animal yeah. noise, uh, but uh, I will make sure I insert that next time. $2 for the Super Chat. Thank you very much. Travis, what have we got next? This is a great one. I like to do this as a, as a little technique. Uh, Once Upon a Techie says, if I change the thumbnail on an existing video, say one that's about a week old, will it help boost in views or reach? Uh, P.S. Let's assume the first thumbnail had no caption, muted colors. Second one is text and vibrant. So maybe, 
and maybe is good because I've actually done this successfully mm. multiple times before, um, either changing the title or thumbnail, depending on what I think needs the most. I literally had a, um, oh yeah, you don't need the timeout, Jessica J. <laughs> you don't have to do that. This bites for you. We, we love Jessica J. Um, here's the thing. The, the, um, for example, I had one a couple of weeks ago that the first three days had like a 5% uh, click-through rate, um, which is not bad. But I knew that I had spent a lot of time in this video. I really wanted to do well. So I had, before I put it up, I actually had two thumbnails I was deciding between. So I put the first one up. It did 5% for two or three days. And I said, no, I want to do this other one. I put the other one on. Immediately, the very next day, and for every day after that, for over a week, click-through rate went up, which means views went up. So wow. yeah. You absolutely can do that. I mean, it went from like 5% to 6 to 8 It went all the way up to 9% for a long portion of time. So absolutely positively can. And we've been told many times that change in thumbnail doesn't really mess with the, the metadata or anything bad like that. So you're not going to mess your video up. However, if you put a worse thumbnail out, yeah. that's a different story. The, the, yeah, the, that is a counter argument, isn't it? I yeah. think we, we've taught, I, I think traditionally speaking, we've talked about not changing your titles and your thumbnails because that means that YouTube may completely review the uh, the video. And I think YouTube has said that's no longer the case. So I think our guidance is now evolving into, if your video is doing well, better than expected, then you have absolutely no reason to change it. The, you're, you're thinking might be, how can I make it better? And sometimes you don't really want to make it better if it's doing well already. But yeah, I think there is now more uh, reason to go back into your older videos and your older, the, the catalog, and maybe seeing if a new thumbnail or a new title may uh, just give it a kick. Like we, uh, a particular example we have is I just did a video on the new Creator Studio. And I think we were the first video out there on YouTube with this brand new layout. And I'm thinking, oh, this is going to get loads of views and it's done really poorly. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking of maybe revisiting that video and changing the thumbnail and the title just to give it a kickstart. Because I think that should be a video that gets that's getting views, but it's not. So thanks, Travis, for that uh, little tip there. I'm going to uh, maybe work on that after this live stream. Thank you to Be Outdoors for yep. £1.99 Super Chat. And the advice has changed my channel. Uh, thank you very much. Well, in what sense? Do let us know how it's changed your channel. We are uh, proud and uh, honoured to know that we've had a positive impact on your channel. Well, All so right. Well, we're gonna... don't know that it's positive. I mean, it could be... <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say he's given a super chat to say that uh, it's changed my channel in a negative way. We're sorry about that, but thanks for the super chat. All right. What we're going to do now, folks, is celebrate your successes. Woohoo! With our uh, milestone moments with the crowd roll. What I want you to do in the chat is do hashtag milestone and tell us what your most recent milestone is. Travis, what's the re most recent milestone on your channel? Um, I surpassed 35 and 36,000 subscribers in the last uh, couple of days. Or oh, whatever. congratulations. So, like, uh, you're getting like hundreds. Oh, so hundreds of subscribers a day recently. That's awesome. I can't Crazy. remember what our last uh, milestone is. I think we passed 360,000 subscribers sometime this yeah. week. But let's celebrate your um, milestones. Nines Cat Studio has hit 1,625, I assume, subscribers. Well done to Leela, who's starting their YouTube journey, has hit 50 subs. We've got Generic Waffle, the most awesome username on the planet, who's got 15,000 views, probably through their generic waffling. Posted Indeed. up, milestone 2,300. Uh, make sure you tell us whether it's views or subscribers, that would help us. Uh, Nathan Heaver with 6,000 views. And Anthony Yo with 2,000 subs. Yay, he says. Travis, who else are we celebrating milestones? Yeah, Angelina Helen, one of our mods, hitting 100 subscribers. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Well done. Uh, let's see. Uh, we also have Epic Cardboard Props, 2,600 subscribers. Uh, we got uh, Crypto Cruising, another one of our mods, joining vidIQ, which is the best milestone ever. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Swarma Music, big YouTubers using my music. That's amazing. Oh, quality, yeah. You do it. My my friend, you do it. Milestone 3 million views congratulations on three million views that's amazing and one more uh milestone 23 in two months with vidIQ fusion gaming thank you so much
Brilliant. I don't know if you said this one, so apologies if you did, Travis. Paul Peck, Dwyer Tube, 55,000 subscribers, 9.5 million views. That is brilliant. Oh, we got a number of super chat from B Outdoors, who says uh, 486 subscribers and climbing after all the changes. That's what we wanted to hear. Well done. Uh, congratulations there. 300,000 views, 350,000 views for this bites for you. And um, we've also got uh, Dean Nimmin. You're still in the house. So what's your latest milestone? Do let us know. Uh, uh, 102 views there for Fusion Gaming and J Yasmin Epps with 8,000 subscribers. Folks, we love celebrating success here on vidIQ. Whether or not you use our tool, spreading your message on YouTube and bringing value to an audience is what we're all here to do. So congratulations on those milestones. Um, we're going to get back to some questions now. Uh, Travis, have you got one lined up? I'm sorry. I've, I'm, I see. I'm not quite ready. Okay. Uh, no, I'm still looking because now we have like a hundred questions literally i'm not saying that figuratively we, <laughs> we do yeah 100 questions uh yeah i thought this was a channel review yeah <laughs> yes yeah, sorry <laughs> sorry that was my fault channel here's, reviews on tuesday here's a good one from sambo should i edit which is hilarious because i think you should edit the question let me continue to move on that's literally what the question make sure you edit your titles i would suggest that if you put accidentally put in the wrong ones uh, I've got one here then from okay, Addy and Jimmy from Montreal in Canada. Is it bad to have the same title for different videos but has different thumbnails? Okay, this is an interesting one. I built up my channel previously, so this is two or three years ago, where the, the beginning of the video title was always how to record your iPhone screen, colon, colon, and then whatever I was talking about. And I actually did that a lot with the PewDiePie versus T-Series stuff. The title started with PewDiePie versus T-Series, colon, and then what the video was actually about. So I don't necessarily have a problem with you, uh, with you trying that. If you have a certain video that's taken off using that exact title, then go for it. And if you're changing the thumbnails, I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. And uh, again, going back to Leron, he's practicing that now with faster Wi-Fi. Have, have you ever experienced similar with that, Travis, where the title is more or less the same, but you're just tweaking it to give it context? Yeah, and actually there was a channel, <coughs> I was on a channel review a while back and found a channel that that's literally every single video was the same title in the very end, which is slightly different. Yeah. Uh, and they had they just crushed it they were really like getting so many views they had about over a hundred thousand subscribers in less than six months it's wow. just nuts yeah i, so I, I always go, go back to this point that when youtube decides that you're the authority or the ambassador for a particular topic yep your channel will just explode. Uh, and Leron, again, is experiencing this with Wi-Fi. I did it with uh, how to record your iPhone screen. We've done it with PewDiePie vs. T-Series. Uh, it's like you just can't help it. It's almost like a drug. I just cannot yeah. help going back to that title because yeah. it just pays off. And yeah. sounds simple, but it, from experience, that's what's, what's happened. Travis, have you got a question lined up now, sir? I do. I do. This is go cool because I think it proves a point to people. Um Hello, I actually have 14,000 subs and I post DIY videos and still don't get views and I get perfect tags, title, description, and I still don't get views. What should I do to get views? So I normally wouldn't go over something like this except for the fact that I think it's really important to show that it doesn't matter how many subscribers you have, that is no guarantee of views. So there's a ton of people that will send us, um, you know, like, how do I get more subscribers? How do I get more subscribers? Well, this person has 14,000 of them and says they don't get views. So maybe what you should be concentrating on is more about the content. In your particular case, yeah. I think my most specific question, my most specific thing is to look in the metrics, look at your click through rate, look at your average view duration. Are people coming in and leaving 30 seconds later? That's going to be the big thing because A, if no one's clicking, that's why you're not getting views. So maybe your thumbnails and titles aren't good enough. And B, if they are clicking, but they're leaving in 20 or 30 seconds, YouTube is not going to promote your videos. Thus, you will not get more views. So it's very likely you're going to have to spend some time in your metrics and try to figure out exactly where that problem lies oh you finished talking i was just trying to quickly bring yep. some up on my screen uh, okay okay <laughs> play some sound effects play some music okay because i've got a great question here and i just wanted yep. to give this person a visual representation of what i'm yep. talking about it comes from antol menke in germany apologies if i pronounce your surname wrong how do i get people's awareness of to my videos i get some videos that go up to one to four thousand views and others that don't pass 100 to 200 views and i don't understand it completely okay what i want you to do on your channel is 
just go to your video tab and sort by most popular and just have a look at your most popular videos and see what the pattern is. It's probably a particular topic, a particular product, something specifically that you're looking for and when you diverge from that topic, then the audience just doesn't connect with it. And the example I wanted to show you, I did a case study on this channel recently. It's, it's a tech channel and they it looks as if they're just reviewing consumer products all of the time. But they found the Galaxy Tab 5 SE, and I think that was a re very recent tablet that was released. And it went from like getting hundreds of views to all of a sudden 10,000 views. And then they doubled down on that content. 12,000 views, 4,000 views, 2,000 views, 3,000 views, 20,000 views. So huge amount of traffic on this particular topic. And then what did they do? They did a video on a thermometer E link display and that got 200 views. And if that's not an indication of YouTube knowing exactly what your audience is for one particular topic and serving it to the right audience versus I have no idea who to send this content to and your subscribers not being interested in that content, that's what you need to be doing. Looking at the, the specific focus of your channel and seeing where you might be going wrong. Travis, let's take another question here in our yeah. Q&A live stream. Yes, the Cloud Tech Advisor from Romania asks, and, and this is something we probably should have mentioned at the beginning. Dear vidIQ, is something happening with the extension on Chrome? The score in the top right corner wasn't showing for the last two days. Thank for your support. And that actually comes from yesterday's uh, force, uh, everyone forced being forced to beta. So we had a little glitch there because of that, but it is fixed today. You just need yeah. to up your extension. Um, do we have a video how to do that on our page? We have an FAQ uh, on how to do that. Essentially, you need to go into your extensions. Uh, on Chrome, you go to settings, extensions, and then update. But you may need to turn on developer mode in order to do that. And I'm trying to remember what the latest version is that you want of Chrome now, of vidIQ. I think it's 285.1 off the top of my head. Yeah. I might be wrong about that. But yeah, it'll essentially... It will automatically update at some point. But if you Yeah, want... it will automatically update. But yeah, it was a problem. It's fixed now. Uh, so we do apologize for that. Uh, one of those things where YouTube changes things and we need to adapt to it and there's always a bit of a delay when that happens. Uh, question here from DG Tronic from Canada. Another Canadian. Wow, you guys are awesome today. How can I improve my views and viewer retention? We'll look at viewer retention because we've looked at the other things a little bit. We talked about editing earlier on, so that's jump cutting to get rid of all of the uh, rubbish that's in your content so that it has a more punchy pace to your content. And just look at your current audience retention, your benchmark, let's say you currently on average make a five minute video and your audience retention is 30%. My advice to you is maybe try making shorter videos three to four minutes long and see if that ups the audience retention because it may be that your audience, just generally speaking, doesn't have an attention span uh, that's, that's really conducive to your content. Uh, anything else there, Travis? Generally speaking, no, I, I, think, I think that's pretty much it. We uh, we kind of talked about that. Just really look at your your metrics, your your view duration, and watch where people are dropping off. I mean, that's really what it is. Stop doing that and do more of what they're 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 watching. And watch the video creators you enjoy watching you create similar content to you and see how they do their videos. Even if you try and copy them exactly, your own interpretation of that video will change to match your personality and yeah. practice just practice 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 is always going to help you with that travis uh your question next please yes i chug donuts is the channel name <laughs> okay. uh, from the i thought that was a question <laughs> no it's a statement um <laughs> if i want to start a channel should i use my own personal email account this is actually a better question than you might think they, they said oh it might be dumb no it's not a dumb question as a matter of fact it's very smart because here's the thing. Um, when you start the channel itself, whether or not you use your Google account from your personal account or not is, is not what I'm going to refer to. What I'm going to refer to is the about page. So okay. as you start to grow, because people can't see your your, your email address um, just going to your account, unless they go to your about page and you surface that information. That email address, you may want to be a separate email address because you know, as you gain a lot of um, followers, subscribers, and viewers, um, you'll start to get contacted by various people. And some of those things you don't really want, and some of them you do. But quite frankly, I don't want them in my normal email. So I made yeah. an email address for that. I would highly, highly, highly recommend for that. And I will say this from a security standpoint, I absolutely encourage you not to use the same email address in your about page that you use for your Gmail account for YouTube. 
you don't want to give anyone who may want to hack your account any information about how you're logging in. And that is a dead giveaway. So that that is a fantastic point, actually. Um, uh, for example, in the tech sector, if you start to grow your channel, you will get endless emails from Wondershare asking you if you want to try yes. their software, yes. and a, a million Chinese companies wanting to send you Bluetooth speakers. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that's our experience. Uh, uh, D is also in the house. Hey, D, I've just got a question for you. I'd love you to answer this because you do uh, live streams with Nick Nimmin uh, every weekend, I think, for like four to six hours. Right now, I am absolutely exhausted after an hour. So I want I want your advice on how on earth you're able to do these marathon live stream sessions because I'd love to do them for longer, but wow, I'm, I'm starting... <laughs> M&M's. I'm starting to fade here, but we're going to keep going for, for a little bit longer here. Uh, I will keep out for that reply, D, if you are uh, watching. The next one uh, comes from uh, Pokebrick02, uh, who's from Georgia, USA, Earth, Milky Way, Galaxy. Thank you for clarifying exactly where you are in the universe. How do I start back on YouTube after not posting anything for two or three years? I couldn't do anything for my channel because of school, uh, which came first, but took up a lot of my time, energy, and motivation. I think you have to accept that from a certain point of view, you're just going to have to almost restart your channel. The subscribers that you have, a lot of them have probably disappeared, uh, and it's just a case of don't don't worry about um, kickstarting the channel. Just get back into it and get back into the groove. Um, it's just, it, it is an unfortunate thing. So there may still be some of your audience there, but the only way you're going to find out is to get back into it. Sounds like you're a Pokemon channel. So are there any big news stories going on with Pokemon Go recently or the new releases on the Switch? That's kind of where I'll be looking at without knowing a bit more about your content. Thank you, by the way, to uh, the Tyler's Tangler. Uh, wow, that is a tongue twister there. Uh, thanks for the thumbnail advice. Uh, 100 in a day. Wow, well, was that 100 subscribers in a day or 100 views? Whatever, you're more than welcome for this, uh, the advice there. Okay, so the answer comes in from, uh, what was it? I thought Dean Nimmin said yeah, pizza. Yeah, Gatorade and coffee. Gatorade and coffee, okay. Thanks for the advice. So we'll take that on board. Travis, let's take another question. All right. A great question uh, from our Canada. All these Canadians. What? Where are Canada? It's because we're all celebrating. It's because nobody's doing any work at the moment. We're celebrating <laughs> the uh, the Toronto Raptors winning the, uh, oh, the NBA. Right. Uh, well, right. fun facts. I think how many Canadians were actually in that team? I think one. How many Canadians won the Stanley Cup with the St. Louis Blues? 11, I think, is some wow. crazy stra uh, thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what was the question? Sorry, I'm going off going off topic as usual. How can I get no copyright songs? This is very important because if you start being able to monetize your content and you use copyrighted music, uh, you risk a lot of things. Um, number one, I mean, for the most part, it's mostly claimed and claimed doesn't necessarily uh, danger your channel, but it does keep you from monetizing the yeah. videos. So there are tons of services out there. I happen to use Epidemic Sound. Um, but there's tons of services out there, music bed and the like, where you just pay a fee every month and um, you get access to a tremendous amount of music. Now, YouTube actually already has music available to you in the creator studio, believe it or not. I actually used a lot of that when I first started and there's some really great music in there. There's a guy yeah, there's Donald who's phenomenal. I love him. Um, so there's a lot of music available to you for free through YouTube. And from what I understand, they actually want to build that out even more. So Keep an eye out there if you don't have money to, to spend because that is free. But don't just grab songs and put them into your, your content because inevitably that will come back to bite you. And even from sources where it says it's royalty free or copyright th free, if you can't yeah. sort of like authenticate the source, just because they say it's uh, non-copyright doesn't necessarily mean it is. So just almost like a do a double double take on a lot of these things and yeah like um travis we use a lot of youtube audio and i think artistly is one that we we use a bit as well all right we're gonna go into another quick fire round here travis hashtag mm -hmm. question here on the bottom and i always like to encourage people to ask uh, slightly more weird and unusual questions in this last quick fire round as long as they're safe and pg friendly uh, mm -hmm. we will try our best to answer them if it is a comedic question we will give you a comedic answer no doubt about that. Somebody tried to catch us out last week, but they misspelt something and said, Ch 
tune buddy and we yeah. had a lot of fun with that particular question uh when it came through uh, and by the I way think, this is a great opportunity there's a lot of sound effects as it we- is yeah I'm, I'm lining up the sound effects here uh, everything is going to try and go out there it's go- i'm going crazy with the sound effects all right i'm going to press the five minute starter because i can see the first question and it is from when my ticker counts down it comes from Michael King. How can I, how I can, I uh, can't read it properly. It's how can people join my channel and viewers for subscribe? I'm not sure what you mean there. Can you just rewrite that question, Michael, and try and answer it again? Uh, that's a cop out from me though, so I'll try another one. Uh, generic uh, waffle, generic, uh, Creative Commons Zero is public domain, right? So I think, yes, y- you can use Creative Commons content, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you should because you've got to attribute it correctly. And especially with video clips, uh, YouTube, a, 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 a ding in a lot of channels now with reused content. Yeah. So I think um, YouTube talk, talk about this as the spirit of monetization, whereby let's say you've got a lot of Creative Commons content and you just stick it on YouTube and you get millions of views. Well, you didn't actually do anything there other than put it on a distribution platform. YouTube wants to rely um, unique created content from individual video creators. So bear that in mind with the Creative Commons question. Travis. Yes, how much of a boost uh, would a new channel get from setting up closed captions and description translation in different languages? That's a great, phenomenal, amazing, deep question. Um, is there a gen- is there any kind of boost? Not technically. However, there are, uh, those people who need those things for closed caption or translations will now be able to watch your videos. So in that way, the boost is there. now. Think about it this way. There are people who are not hearing impaired that use closed captions all the time. And the ones that are automatic by Google and YouTube are phenomenal, but not perfect. So if you take advantage of some of the services out there to translate and or uh, closed caption your video, it does not hurt. It can only help as far as how much of a boost. That's hard to say, but I absolutely recommend it. Great question here from Nathan Heaver. What's for tea tonight? I have a big quandary because uh, we were going to have chicken curry last night, but we left it out of the fridge, so it went off. So we had to have a pizza instead, which we're going to have all uh, tonight. So yeah, I have no clue. At the moment, it's probably going to be a banana sandwich. Who here has banana sandwiches? Give me a thumbs up because I think they're absolutely delicious. Travis, what's on your menu this evening? Uh, let's see. I am having. St- I actually have some steak. I'm going to make. Oh, actually- very nice. Yes, indeed. Yes. It's a bit, a bit of insight there into the vidIQ diet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question, how to get more organic subs? Great question, California spinners, instead of just subs. Organic subs is what we should be talking about, and that's a good one. And that's to really be an expert in your niche, really to be the, the place for people to go for either entertainment or education, the two major things that people come to YouTube for. Be really good at one of those two, maybe both if you can. And uh, just be consistent. Give some give someone a reason to always want to come back. You can do teases on future videos, but just make sure you try to engage. Definitely in the comment section, always reply to all the comments you get and just be that person that people want to watch more of. And we have Lillian Banana, Lily, who has banana peanut butter sandwiches. We've also got uh, B Outdoors, who has banana and cheese sandwiches. Wow, that is an unusual combination there. And the next question is uh, Shaggy Boys. I do everything right, thumbnails, tags, content, but don't get any views. I would say we we, we get asked this a lot, where people say, I've done everything you've told me and nothing's, nothing's working. I would say... Are you sure about that? And I don't mean to be, um, I don't mean to be uh, pedantic about this because if I probably if I visit your channel, I would say there's something not right with the thumbnails here, or you're jumping too many topics. I almost guarantee you when somebody says that that there isn't something necessarily right. Like. Um, what I will say is if you. Uh, uh, add your form to the Tuesday live stream. Uh, we'll try and take a look at that and we'll hopefully be able to give you some answers on that. But it's usually the fault of the video credit. I'm, I'm sorry to say it that way, but it's usually and uh, uh, the, the quote. And you're 100% right. The, the question usually comes from some form of entitlement. Like, I'm doing everything right. Why am I not doing doing it? Why, why am I not getting the rewards? Yeah. And it's just patience. you got to keep hustling. If you are doing the right things, you will eventually be rewarded, but it doesn't happen straight away. Uh, sorry if that's a little too harsh, but that's a common question, and we often look at the channels, and it's always the same answer. Sorry, I ranted a bit there, but Travis, what have we got from you? That's right. 
Uh, how do you feel about buying ads to promote your channel? Um, it's not generally a good idea. It's kind of a waste of money because really, to be honest, all the money you put into that could be used to things for your channel. Uh, even if it's small things, um, it takes hundreds of dollars to get maybe tens of subscribers. So I, I just don't think that the ROI is there for you. And the final one here from TSP Hate. US doesn't have banana sandwiches. Do you guys have Wendy's? Yes, we do. We do have Wendy's in um, in Canada, but my preferred uh, junk food of choice is probably a McDonald's, I must admit. Double quarter of pounder and cheese, five chicken nuggets, and an M&M McFlurry snack size. Oh. I have got that order down to a T. All right, I think as we end the live stream today, thank you as always for your contributions. I want to know what you're having for tea tonight and I will read it out in the shout outs. Yes, that's how the Thursday live stream goes, a little bit bonkers, but we love uh, your uh, uh, the time you spent with us. Uh, it's been an honor and a privilege, Travis, as always, having you on board. And no doubt uh, you will be back for either the audits next week or the Q&A next week. And we're going to say goodbye to the following. TSB Heat is having burgers. Uh, Crypto Cruising is having a chicken korma. Uh, Brain, uh, Brainy Beaver says a and in Canada is amazing. And by the way, not sponsored any of these, by the way, hashtag not sponsored, but if any of these sponsors do want to get in touch for the next live stream, you are more than welcome. We've got Nine Cat Studios having a lemon raspberry poke, I think that is. Uh, Abraham's here. He's obviously a student because he's having beans on toast. What else have we got here, Travis? Who's What tea are people having tonight? Looks like we got, did we say chili cheese burritos? No, <laughs> we did not. <laughs> A ham's burger. It's almost like a hamburger, but it's ham's burger. Uh, the Sam Droid Online is having bean soup, some tacos. Is oh my goodness! Now everyone's putting all their food in. Uh, a chicken and spinach from Be Outdoors, and Wendy's from Life Ladder. And hey, White Castle, which I have never had. I've always wanted to try from Michael King. Nafi, I think this is a good strategy here because people are having to think a little bit about what they're typing so the chat isn't going as fast. So I'm going to have to do that more often, I think. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Mooks. You've just got here and we're leaving, but do let us know what you're having for tea tonight. A foot-long meatball sub for Hamarado Ham. I'm assuming that if uh, Hate Cake channel is still in here, you won't be having cake tonight for uh, your tea. The Digital Jedi Master is having an emoji chicken. It looks like the there and doing exploring is having apple for tea and uh also well but brainy beaver is having the biggest spliff you can roll tonight that is legal in canada so i can't i, I think i i can actually say that on a live stream and meatball sandwich uh there for lurgs and uh, yeah thank you five guys or oh, five guys i do like the burgers from five guys you're right probably pizza and generic waffle ironically is not having a waffle tonight you are having probably pizza folks it's been an honor and a privilege if you enjoyed this entertainment attending live stream do make sure to give us a thumbs up i'm going to use lots of sound effects as we say goodbye travis as always thank you very much for your time and we will see you next week for all of the usual vid iq goodness you have spent the most important currency in the world with us today which is time and i hope we repaid you with some value bye for 